Hey, welcome back to my channel. I'm Molly from Vintage Grace Design. If you're new here, I'm a furniture refinisher and DIYer. And in today's video, I'm gonna be going over spraying for beginners. So if you're interested in learning how to use a paint sprayer, then this video is for you. spray this is the equipment that I would recommend investing in everything will be linked down below in the description box and I just want to say that this video is not sponsored I am just recommending this particular model of sprayer based on my own personal experience so this is the Wagner Flexio 5000 I think it's very affordable at about $230 on Amazon right now and based on its ease of use and operation I think it makes it a perfect sprayer for beginners so I will go through what you would get in your box, how you assemble, disassemble, how you operate the whole machine. And then I'll also show you how to clean it at the end of the video. And then in between, I'll show you all of the spray painting techniques. All right, so this is what you'll get in your Flexio 5000 box. So you'll receive this whole unit here and it actually serves as a storage unit. So you can pop your nozzles in here. You could wrap your hose up in here and you can store everything right in there. It's also the turbine unit. So this is what will power your sprayer. You don't need a separate air compressor to run this machine, so that's really nice. So I'll show you here, we have a detail nozzle. This is the smaller one. And it also comes with a eye spray nozzle, which is this larger one. This is used for large projects like spraying walls or a fence. I haven't used this because I only spray furniture, so I use the detail nozzle for that. What's great about the detail nozzle is you can purchase them separately on Amazon. It comes with one, and if you want extra canisters, you can purchase them separately. I have three at this point. Um, so this will detach. You've got a little tab here that you'll push down. It allows you to twist the entire thing off. So there you go. So you have your hose here, and this is the power on. You'll also need to turn the unit on. There is a switch down here to turn, this, turn the unit on. So once you plugged it in, you'll flip the switch on, and nothing happens until you turn on this switch here, which is what's really nice because you're not gonna be blowing air. You don't have to uh, walk back to your unit to turn it off. You can just flip it off while you're holding it, and then you can go and turn off the entire unit here. So this also hooks right on here. There's a little peg and that allows you just to set your uh, spray when you're working on it. So that's super convenient and helpful. So since I don't use the eye spray larger nozzle, I'm only going to talk about this detail nozzle, which is what I use for furniture. So we'll go through how to disassemble this. You'll see here that there is this dial. There's a plus and a minus sign, so you will twist the dial up if you want to put more paint through it. So if you have a thicker paint, you would turn this up. If you are spraying something thinner, like polyurethane, you would dial it down so less material will come out. So you'll wanna learn just the, that one simple adjustment, and then there is an adjustment on the hose handle as well which we will go through when we start spraying. So it's just two dials, this one and then this one. So that's why I love this for beginners because it is so simple to use. Okay, so there are a couple parts to this. There's the plastic canister where you put your paint. Twist right off. And then you'll have this piece that also detaches. This helps to seal it. So you can just disassemble that for easy cleaning. And then those are the only parts uh, for this part of, of the piece, but then you'll have to take apart the tip and nozzle here. So just twist off this large O-ring, which holds these pieces on. And then this one will help you with your spray patterns, what direction you want, either if you're gonna be spraying vertically or horizontally, you'll twist that. And then this piece here pops off as well. And then what's nice about this, this particular sprayer is that there are no changeable tips. So it's just gonna be this plastic one here. A lot of other sprayers have 
metal tips that you can change based on the material you're spraying and the viscosity. But this one, you don't have to change anything. It just has this tip here and everything is really powered by your dial and the other one that's on the handle. So those are the parts, so very simple and easy. This does come apart as well. If you do need to clean it, you can twist this off, this, remove this tube. This little red ring in here will also come out. So if anything gets gunked up, you can, re, you can remove those parts as well to thoroughly clean it. But as far as everyday use, I only take apart these things. Um, typically all I need to do to clean it. So this is how I typically start off before I start spraying for my next job since I, the last time I used it, I had disassembled it to clean it. So we will start here and reassemble, add paint, and then we'll talk about painting techniques. So as far as reassembly, you're just gonna put it back the way we took it apart. Pop this into this ring here. And then depending on which direction you're spraying, so if you are spraying in a downward direction, you'll wanna make sure that this is pointing forwards. So like that, pointing forward. And that's essentially just so when you're tipping your canister, it's getting as much paint as possible. If you are spraying upward, so if you're pointing the sprayer upward, you're going to just turn this around. So it is pointing backwards. So again, that way, if you're tipping it backwards, it's getting the paint. So I always, I always have mine facing forward and then reassembling the tip, you're going to put this piece right back in here. There's a little notch here. You'll just line it up with one of the four notches on the tip. So just like that, and then you'll press it down. And then we'll put that piece on and our O-ring. All right, so then we're gonna stop here and we are going to add some paint. So here are the other supplies that you'll want when spraying. Filters, so this is a really fine mesh filter here at the bottom and that will be for straining your paint. So you always wanna strain paint before you spray to get out any globs or anything that will end up getting stuck to your piece. So I always strain my paint first. And then I also have a stand here. So in case I have, in case I wanna fill up the entire can with paint, um, otherwise it will sit down in it and then uh, the paint as it rises will obviously hit the bottom of this. So if you are filling it up or if you have a larger, like a taller um, or larger canister, then you would just strain it and let it drip down below. Okay, so we're gonna start off with primer first. So we'll spray the primer and I'm using my favorite white primer from Wise Owl that I do retail on my website. So you can check that out at carolinafurniturecollective.com. And you'll always want to stir your paint really well. I like to stir for at least 60 seconds. So it depends on how separated it is, like if it's a paint color, but 60 seconds minimum. All right, now we're gonna strain the paint. white first, even if I'm painting in a dark color, because it allows me to test for bleed through. I'm typically working on older vintage pieces that will bleed based on the type of wood or if I sand through the existing finish. So I always prime with white first. And then if I'm painting with a dark color, I follow it up with a black primer just as a transition coat. And with this primer, you can thin it up to 10%. I would recommend thinning it, it is a thicker primer. So I am going to thin it with water because I do want it to spray more finely when it comes out of my sprayer. So I will add water to this. 
All right, so here's my water, and I've got about two cups in of paint, of primer in here. So I am going to dilute it up to 10%. So I'm gonna start off with one and a half tablespoons, which would be around 5%. So I'm gonna start off, this is a half a tablespoon. So I'm gonna do one, two, so that's two tablespoons and a half of water. I'm going to mix that really well. They do make viscosity meters, so you could always get one of those to tell how like thin the paint is. I just like to eyeball it as far as when I think it's thin enough because all paint is different. So if I still think that this is too thick, I'll add another up to one and a half tablespoons. So that this is to me a little, still a little too thin. And that again, that's just based on me eyeballing it. So I'm going to add another half a tablespoon at a time and mix until I get what I'm looking for. That is thin enough for me. Much thinner than where we started. So that is a good consistency. So I ended up adding three tablespoons to this. And again, this was almost two cups. It was actually 500 milliliters because there are measurements on the outside. So it's 500 milliliters, which means I can technically thin it up to 3.8 tablespoons. So I put in three. Most of the material you're spraying, paint, polyurethane, it'll tell you the instructions, the manufacturer instructions, how much you can thin the material. So always read that if you're unsure. All right, now we're just going to pop this into here. Tighten it. Make sure you tighten it well. You wanna have a good seal. And we're ready to spray. Now, one of the biggest challenges about spraying is having a designated area to do it. I have a very basic spray setup. It's very, very, very basic. All it is is a drop cloth taped to the wall and a drop cloth on the floor. That's all that I do. Up against one wall in my garage, near my garage door, and this is all that I do. And then every once in a while, I'll swap out the drop cloths. Some people have real booths. I never have, this works for me. They also make spray tents, so if you're concerned about where to spray, you could get a spray tent. Wagner makes one. I'll link that down below in the description box as well. I do have one of those. Um, you can use that outside to help block from wind. So there are options to spray. You could also set up a drop cloth in your driveway and spray on a nice day when it's not too windy. So definitely don't keep that from deterring you. Before I get started at spraying, I wanna talk about safety equipment. You definitely want to wear a respirator when spraying paint primer, polyurethane, anything. I wear a respirator when I'm spraying cleaning solutions on my furniture. When I'm sanding, I wear a respirator all the time. So really important, I have one of these 3M masks, I'll link down below in the description box. And then I do also have an RZ mask, which is a lightweight breathable mesh one. Um, this one's great when it's hot because the rubber on this one makes my face sweat. Um, so I have to invest in a good mask. So definitely do that. And then I also have, this isn't safety, but it protects my hair. It's just a really simple like sock hat. It's like a little sleeve that you put over your head. So that'll protect my hair from getting any type of spray dust or overspray in it. Um, really simple I'm sure they make nicer ones but this works for me and then you can also and probably should also wear goggles I am really bad about wearing goggles when I spray because I can't see well when I'm wearing them um, but I should mention that that is something that you should wear as well um, so don't follow my lead on that one protect your eyes as well all right so our primer is loaded up we're going to attach it to our hose so you've got the grooves here and you're gonna turn the hose sideways and you're gonna push it in here and twist until this tab clicks here. So like we talked about earlier, you've got your material flow valve. So this dial here, you'll turn up for more material 
material to come out. So for thicker paints like primer, you're gonna want that to be up higher. For thin material like polyurethane, you're gonna want it to be really low. I would always start with the very lowest setting with polyurethane, test it to see how runny it is because you'll get really bad drips and runs with polyurethane specifically. Then back here is the airflow dial. So when this little arrow is all the way down to the left, so when it's twisted as far to the left as it can go, that's the lowest setting, that's the one, and then it twists all the way to the other side and that's the highest setting. So that is pushing as much air out as possible. So when we turn this on, you'll hear what it sounds like at the lowest setting and then I'll turn this up so you can hear it get more and more powerful. So again, for heavier, more viscous paint, you're going to want to turn that dial up, but I would say to start like in the middle and then work your way up. For polyurethane, I usually set mine down at the bottom around a three. So the first thing you're going to do is turn on the turbine unit. So you've got this power button down here. So I'm just gonna pop that down. Nothing will happen until you actually turn on this power button here on your hose handle. So you'll hear that. So I'll, I'll uh, show you what it sounds like starting at the lowest airflow setting. So you can hear it getting louder and louder as it's pushing more air through. So I dialed it back down to zero or to one, so I'll show you what it looks like. Pretty much nothing will come out with paint this thick at that setting. So we'll show you and then we'll turn it up from there and show you as it comes out. I always recommend testing on cardboard first. I have cardboard here all the time because I test every single time I am about to spray a piece of furniture. I test my settings just to make sure I didn't forget to change something because uh, that's the worst is if you don't and you go to spray your paint and then you have runs everywhere. So always test on cardboard. So I ended up turning the material flow all the way up and I turned the air power all the way up as well. Because like I said, the primer is always the thickest material that I spray. So I always end up at the max for both. And then I get a really nice fine mist and that's exactly what I'm going for. I don't want it to be heavy and to drip. So that is perfect. I can show you what it looks like to spray a much thinner material and how that could drip much easier at lower settings. So what's great about this sprayer is that you can easily swap out the nozzles. So if you want to switch between paint and poly or primer and paint, or you're working on multiple pieces at the same time, you can easily swap out the nozzles. So I put in some really watered down black paint so I can demonstrate really thin paint spraying. And it's just a good opportunity to show you how easy it is to swap these out. And just like that. You don't need to clean anything else because the hose and the comp air compressor are completely separate units. So I'm going to put the settings back down. So I'm going to dial that back down a bit and I'm going to turn the air power down so we can see the difference here with thinner paint. So we'll go ahead and try that out.
So do you see how much more paint comes out of this at the low settings? I had it down at the bottom and then midway and then at the highest power. And then I also had the flow, the material flow down quite a bit. So that just shows you the complete difference in the thinness of your paint and what that does, and what you'll need to adjust your settings for based on the material that you're spraying. Okay, let's talk about proper spraying techniques. So as far as holding the gun, you want to make sure that your wrist is straight and you're not tilting it forward or backward, that you're not getting too close and then far away as you move. You wanna keep it the same distance from your surface. I like to keep it probably six inches from the surface of my piece and then you're gonna move in a very straight line. So I always do a nice slow and steady pass and then I, the next pass is overlapping by half. So I will, I will go left to right and then I'll come back right to left, overlapping my first spray row by half. And as far as the orientation which you're spraying, if you have this part straight across, that's what you'll be using when you're spraying horizontally. If you're spraying vertically, up and down, on like a tall piece, you're just gonna wanna switch this to be up and down. That'll change the spray pattern for you. So I will demonstrate what that looks like both ways. So first we'll go vertical. Make sure that you're going in a consistent speed. I like to do mine pretty slowly. You don't want to go too slow or your paint will pull up in one spot. So you'll know when you start testing on a piece of cardboard or like a wall like this that you'll know if you're moving too slowly if the paint starts to pull and run. So I like to move it in a pretty slow but steady pace and I always overlap by a half. And that's, that's how you really want to hold and move your spray gun. I should mention that I do tilt my wrist just to get those trim pieces. You want to make sure you get the top and the bottom of them, but for any flat surfaces, you want to make sure you keep your wrist straight. is still wet but it gives such a nice finish and it honestly takes no time at all compared to hand brushing so that's really why I have switched to primarily spraying is just the efficiency so how much time it saves how you can do detail work like this very easily without any brush strokes and it just gives such a nice smooth finish so we'll let this dry all right, now for disassembling and cleaning, which again is super easy with this particular sprayer. So 
I'll show you some of the cleaning tools that I have. Uh, just a plastic bristle brush, a sponge with a scrubby side, and then I do have a couple different uh, wire brushes, like tube brushes. I have different sizes of these, and I also have some really small ones too to get in where the tip is on the nozzle, and then some of these just metal straight needle sticks. I don't even know what they're called. I should probably figure out what they're called. I will start by un disassembling this whole thing again, and then I just use I just use warm water. You can use warm water and soap, like mild soap, dish soap, or whatever, but I find that I don't leave mine too long that I really need to scrub with anything other than water, but you totally can. Um, I wash mine out every single night. You can leave it for a few hours. I totally leave it and do multiple coats, like wait for a coat to dry, come back, spray it again, as long as you just peel off the paint that hardens on the end, or even take this part off and, and like clean the tip of it, put it back together, you can totally get away with not having to clean it out in between each spray. I always do. I always, <laughs> I don't, I usually don't ever clean it out in between sprays is what I mean to say. Um, but I always clean it out every night. I don't leave it overnight. So you're going to remove it the same way we showed earlier before. So you'll take off this O-ring this part, and then you're going to take off this one too. It's usually a little bit tight and stuck, so you're going to want to wiggle it out. And then you'll see the tip here with a bunch of paint. And then I take off this part here, and then I'll also remove the seal as well. Jeez. Normally I have the water running. So all those parts I'll take apart. And then I will turn on the water, and then you probably won't be able to hear me, but you'll at least see me washing these. to note. I don't find this to be to take any longer to clean out than a paintbrush does. So originally when I was you know afraid to start spraying I thought that the cleanup would be really just intimidating and take a long time but it does not take me any longer to clean this out as it does to clean a paintbrush out thoroughly. So I, I do appreciate that and then the other question I'll show you how much paint we used. So the other concern is around how much paint you waste. And I, you definitely use more paint spraying than br hand brushing for sure. 
but I don't find that it's very wasteful at all. I think there's minimal overspray and you really don't end up using that much. Like this is how much of the primer we used. It was a full can. So that's really not that much. So I don't think it uses a ton of paint. Yes, you need more than hand brushing, but it's not a crazy amount that it wastes. So here is the finished piece and I love how it turned out. I ended up mixing a custom color to get this really pale blue. It's mostly snow owl with a little bit of inkwell. So I'll link those down below in the description box along with the exact formula in case you're interested in replicating this color. I also used a little bit of Annie Sloan's gold gilding wax to highlight the details and to make the hardware pop. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.